Good crowd today. It's good to see you guys out here. I think that fall is now in full, and uh, it's nice. It's cooler weather, kind of moving into this different time of year, getting back to our schedule. So we're glad that you guys are here. Glad you're tuning in. I think we're live on Facebook at 1015. I think it worked. It happened in two weeks. We've had to go at 1145, but we got it all rolling back there today. And so we're glad you're with us, and we want to encourage you today uh, at the end of this message to share this, um, to post it on your own. Uh, timeline to do whatever to help us share the gospel and to continue to change lives uh, during this time. And just for a minute here, we're going to give you a couple of announcements. Uh, we want to remind you that if, if you or someone you know might need some help during this time, let us know uh, so we can do whatever it is that might can help you move forward, whether it has to do with food, clothing, water, shelter, just simple things. Send us an email. We're able to help out because our church family, those who watch, People who support our, our ministry here are very faithful and very generous and uh, have always given to support us. And, and we thank you and we encourage you to continue to do that so we can continue to, to share the gospel. And you can give it the baskets in the back or you can do it through our church app um, there on the home screen there at the bottom. Or you can text Silver Refuge to 833-445-6325. And if you don't like technology and all that stuff, well, I mean, that's all right because that's just the way it's going. Uh, but you can still utilize the old snail mail and stamp, uh, slap a stamp on an envelope and send it to P.O. Box 872. We got a few things coming up this week, and we got some things on the horizon that they're a little, can't right, quite see them yet. I didn't, I didn't mean to make it that small. Um, but um, it's coming soon. But anyway, today we're going to be here, uh, and we are live at 1015. Praise God. We're back doing it live at 1015. Uh, there will be no small groups tonight. Sam and Kalen got family in town. I believe they'll probably be spending time with them. So you guys do the same this evening. I want to encourage you to tune in on Tuesday nights to listen to our announcements. That kind of gives you an update on some ministry, some opportunities that may come up between now and then. If we have to make last-minute changes because of this thing called COVID, hopefully we won't. Our plans are to go live on Wednesday uh, at 6.45 and have worship at 6.30 in here. So uh, our, our Wednesday night crowds are starting to kind of come to life a little bit more and have more people here. I know it's tough to be here in the middle of the week. Uh, maybe just from a scheduling perspective, but if you can join us, it's a great time to come together. Uh, we, we worship together. We go live at 645 if you can't be here. And um, uh, so we're doing that this week. And then on Saturday, it's, uh, it's another youth and community, and I, pr I spelled it wrong. It should be spelled wrestling, all right? It's a wrestling event, but it's a wrestling event up at the Jackson County Rescue Squad. Uh, it's to raise money. Uh, for uh, Shop with a Cop, and we're going to support that this year. I believe that's what it's for. There's all kind of ministry involvement as well. Life challenges involved. We're involved. The Bridge Church. And we're doing this to help raise money for a good cause. And uh, it's actually, if you want to come, it's free because uh, we'll, we'll handle it. It's a youth event. It's geared towards youth because they like that wrestling. Um, but it's open for the whole community. And so we're going to pay your way. Just, just show up and tell them you're with Refuge and have a good time. And it's kind of like the television wrestling that you get to see. These guys set it up out there, and they have a good time. And throughout the night, during some breaks, they'll take an opportunity to, to share a little message about how God's worked in their life. And so we make it, we take wrestling and use it for God's glory. And so the last time we did one of these back in May, 35 people stepped into a relationship with Jesus. And so uh, we believe it's powerful. Like We can get together and do this. And uh, I have an opportunity at the end to, to speak a little bit and to share what God's going to lay on my heart, and uh, it's just a great time. So come out if you want to. It starts at 5 o'clock this coming Saturday. Um, and then ve coming very soon, we're ha we have Trunk or Treat. It's going to be on October the 26th, which is the last Wednesday of October. We're probably going to do it very similar to what we did last year. We're still kind of talking about a couple of things. Open it up for the kids, give out the candy, let them dress up, have a good time. And uh, hopefully in the years to come, we can go back to having our massive community events at some point uh, when COVID gets out of here. So, um, so that's what we got coming up, and today we're in week three of this series uh, called uh, Mission Submission, and, uh, and we've talked about living our life completely for God, and in, in week one, what I did was I started off just explaining the four elements that we're going to look at about submitting our lives to God. We talked about we're going to do it through worship, through prayer, by reading, listening to, and obeying God's word, and by reaching out to disciple others. And so we started last week talking about this idea that we are created to worship. That's why God created you for that. I mean, he, he, you're here for that. That's why you exist. You exist 
here on this earth. Sometimes we kind of lose sight of all of that and while we're here. We are here to worship Him. We are His creation. So He is, he is worthy of our praise and our worship. Our lives should exude that worship of God and, uh, and they should be lived for His glory and not ours. And we know that when we do that, He'll take care of us and He'll give us good things and a life of abundance through Jesus. And so today we're going to move on. As I said, we talked about worship last week. Today we're going to talk simply about prayer. And we're going to talk about the simplicity of it, but like the difficulty of it. We're going to talk about the distractions that come with it, but the power that comes with it. We're going to talk about the Holy Spirit working in us today. And we're going to look at a couple of different passages of Scripture. We're going to start off with our foundation Scripture for this whole series, which is in James chapter 4. Then we're going to talk in Philippians about the power of prayer. We're going to look in Philippians, and then we'll give you some supporting Scripture along the way. And as we look at this Scripture from James chapter 4 that we've looked at the first two weeks, I want to point something out a little different to you today when it comes to this area of our lives. So as the Scriptures say, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. So humble yourselves before God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come close to God, and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Let there be tears for what you've done. Let there be sorrow and deep grief. Let there be sadness instead of laughter and gloom instead of joy. That is our attitude towards sin. But he just he's reminding us, again, in verse 10, as he started off this passage, humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up in prayer. Now, before I go further, I mentioned this. I want to mention it again. Talk about prayer. I, I cannot think, as we humble ourselves before God, and I want you to think about this as well, okay? Like, we talk about doing it in every area of your life. Is there any area of your life more, I mean, from a physical aspect or even emotional or mental, uh, but, but literally a physical aspect of your life, where you can humble yourself more before God than to literally maybe even figuratively, get on your knees, bow down, face down, pray to Him, and worship Him during that time. That is the, to me, that is the most humbling thing that we can do as Christians, is to just humble ourselves before God in prayer. It's just natural. We close our eyes and bow, we bow our heads. We're humbling ourselves before Him. And... And it's, it's such a powerful opportunity to seek Him when our lives are full of fear, uncertainty, chaos, worry, anxiety, all of the things that we struggle with daily. We all do. We can take that opportunity to simply humble ourselves before God and to seek His will, to ask Him to lead us, to guide us, to direct us, to open our eyes, to open our hearts, to do these things. And it's just a simple thing we can do to humble ourselves before God and communicate with the creator of the universe. Y'all with me? Amen. Then why is it the hardest thing for us to do without getting distracted? Amen. Tell me, please, I hope I'm not preaching to myself. I always preach to myself, but I hope I'm not preaching only to myself right now. That when I spend time in prayer, I am distracted at just with everything. The enemy wants to completely take my mind off that time with God. And I'm thinking about things that can be silly. I'm thinking about things that are completely out of my control. I'm thinking about things that have nothing to do with that moment of spending time with God. I get distracted during prayer like nobody's business. Are you with me? Amen. Why? Because that is when we are humbling ourselves most before an almighty God to spend time with him and to communicate with him and to listen to that small, still voice to lead, to guide, and to direct our hearts. And so the enemy will do anything to get us distracted from that time. Anything. Because he under, I, believe, I believe he knows the power behind that time we have with God. The power of prayer, of being in that moment, of listening to his voice. In our hearts, some of y'all, hey, listen, people, so, people told me, I've heard the voice of, I've heard it audibly. I'm like, well, he's God. He can do what he wants to do. I'm like, but you know, whether he speaks audibly, whether he speaks to your heart, whether he opens your eyes to something, whether he changes your mind about something, what a powerful time that is, but what a crazy time of not being distracted. 
And do you know what someone pointed out to me on the way out of the first service today? Isn't it crazy how you can scroll through Facebook and lose track of time because you never get distracted and you do it for hours on end? Take, take, take one minute to try to talk to God and the enemy will be like, oh, no, 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 go, go, go. Don't forget your kids today. You got to get them from school. Don't forget to do this. Don't forget to do that. What are you having for dinner tonight? Aren't you hungry? You know why? He distracts us because of the power behind it. I want to look at these verses. And they're, listen, I've read these verses oh, just time and time again. But really this week, as I was preparing for this, I thought to myself, man, what a promise and what power in these two verses that we find in Philippians chapter 4. Y'all probably seen this. And like just the simplicity of it, but also just at the same time, like the power behind it. I, like, I could, those first four words, I could preach for years about that. Don't worry about anything. <laughs> Some of you are like, man, the Bible's an impossible guidebook. Like, <laughs> don't worry about anything. But it, here's the solution. It's not, it's not just saying to you, don't do that, because that's not humanly possible. If, that was, if it ended right there, we'd look at that and go, I can't do that. Because there's no alternative. I'm going to worry. I'm going to be filled with anxiety. I'm going to struggle a little bit. But right after that, Paul says it gives us an alternative. What, do, do this instead. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. We can even tell God what we need. Like God is our creator and he already knows, but, but God wants us to, he wants to hear us. He want, tell him what you need and thank him for all he's done. Like, and this next like, this next verse is crazy. If you remember the world we live in in 2021 and what we deal with on a daily basis, but if we can do that, we will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. It's that good. It's just that good. And I'm going to back it up later with, with what Jesus said. I mean, th this is just, this is Paul uh, uh, instructing the church on what to do and what, on Christians what to do. And, and we're going to see this in, in some of Jesus' words earlier in his ministry. It, it, it'll exceed anything we can understand. His peace will guard our hearts. And you know what the Bible tells us about our heart? About guarding our heart? To guard it above all else. You know why? Because it determines the course of your life. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds. Oh my, that's what gets me. My heart, like I, for me, some people struggle with their hearts, some people struggle with their minds, some people struggle in different areas. My, my mind is what I struggle with. You're like, well, we know you, I, we know, we know, we know, you're crazy, I know. But when you look at this, these promises here, and what, the this, this simplicity of this, this first point is, probably the, the easiest first point that I ever had to come up with in a sermon. I was like, I read that and I'm like, well, we got, this is what we need to do when it comes to prayer in our life. Obviously, if we can get that, we need to make it a priority. Like that, that that's like, you look at that, you're like, I want that. I'll take that above all else. Because there's, there's so much going on in my world right now. And I worry about so many things and I'm anxious because I'm human and all of these other things. But I, I need to do that. I need to listen to God. I need to take some time and listen to him. To spend time in prayer. That is an, and people think like, like th this is one of those kind of like um, uh, interesting parts about our walk with Jesus. Taking time to be still and stopping is actually an action. He wants us to actively stop and seek him. And not just all the time be moving around and get going and doing things on our own. But we need to stop and make prayer a priority. And understand the power that comes with that when we when we are seeking God in prayer and we're asking, Lord, I mean, like this is like like God's got to look at me sometimes. I, I, I know He don't. I'm just thinking like from a human perspective here. But like, you know, I pray some things to Him sometimes, and, I, and He's got to be like, Son, come on now, we already dealt with this. I've already answered you on this. You don't need to pray for that more. You don't need to pray. Like, I, but like, I, I spend that time praying to Him and seeking Him, and knowing that He will guide my heart and seeking the power of the Holy Spirit in my life because things in my life, just like in your life, 
We had this talk at our men's Bible study, which I'm going to talk about that a little bit today as well. But we're all just busy, crazy. We're all crazy. We're busy. Just, we're, just, we're all over the place all the time. And I need the power of the Holy Spirit to, to settle me and to lead God and direct me. And, and this power that comes by the Holy Spirit is mentioned. I love this verse in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, that when God leads us, we don't have a spirit of fear. You fill in the blank with any of those other words that I just mentioned, the anxiety, the, this desire to control things because they seem uncontrollable, whatever. But God, God hasn't given us a spirit of fear and timidity or even to, to step back from that kind of stuff, but of power and love and self-discipline. And if, we, if we're going to tap into that and allow him to lead God and direct us, then, then we have to make prayer a priority. And this is like I and I God just revealed to me just just how powerful and I've always said some of you are like well we understand the power of prayer, but like to me it's just this I can, I believe it can be such a powerful tool that like we absolutely just put in his hands and trust in him to work not only in our lives but in the lives of those that we're praying for. And so what I what I talked about on Thursday night and what we had this discussion with the men that showed up at our Bible study was this. It's like sometimes in ministry and sometimes in our walk with Jesus, we feel like we're not doing enough. Don't y'all, do y'all ever feel that way? Like, I'm not doing enough. I should be doing more. I should be doing more. And I thought to myself, and this is what kind of hit on me on Thursday. I'm like, but we're all doing things all the time. Like, we, we just, we do things constantly. And you've got tasks, millions of them, every day that you've got to get done. And asking somebody to do, like, and I think sometimes in ministry we, we feel like we fail because it's like, well, I can't get these tasks done, and I need to do more. And so I, our challenge on, when, on, on Thursday night, I, I get so mixed up because there were so many things happened this past week, but like, our challenge Thursday was this, hey, these guys that are right here at this table, the ones that showed up, I said, let's just, I'm not going to ask you to do anything other than pray for me over the next two weeks. Let's commit to pray for each other over the next two weeks. And when we come back at our next men's Bible study, let's just talk about how that's went. And let's be honest if we could actually do it. We take that time each day to stop and just pray for one another, for, lead, for God's leadership, guidance, direction in our life, to know that we have other men praying for us. That I'm praying for you, you're praying for me, and we're tapping into that power, and we're going to make it a priority, enough of a priority to do it every day. And when we do that, this is what we believe that God will begin to open our eyes and open our hearts and show us areas where we can become more involved, where we don't feel like we're doing ministry, we're just living it out. We're living it out. And it takes care of itself because God's going to lead us into that. So I want to talk real simply today about three areas that we should make it a priority in our life. And they're, they're pretty simple things, I think, and I think we can all do this. The first one is this. I know, I mean, I need to pray for personal direction. Just in your own personal life. Take time each day. God, not, not my will, but your will be done. That's the model prayer that Jesus shared. We call it the Lord's Prayer. Just for personal direction. Trust in Him. Listen, do this. Seek His will and His way in all that you do personally. And depend on Him during this time. And when He, when he shows you things... If you don't think as a follower of Jesus that God is going to show you some things sometimes that don't make sense, then you're not following the same God that I'm following. Because we're going to do things sometimes that don't make sense. Or God's going to lay things on our hearts to do and actions to take that won't make sense to us. But we're going to trust in him that he's leading us and guiding us. And we know that it's going to be for good. But we've got to pray for personal direction because We'll, we'll go the wrong way sometimes if we don't. And God is giving us this opportunity, I think, during this time. Some of you are like, I, I'm tired of unprecedented times. I'm ready to look at something and go, hey, there's a precedent here. We know what to do. Um, but that's just not happening right now, right? But God is giving us this opportunity while everything's going crazy around us to stop, to be still, to reset, and to continue to move forward. And these verses from the Old Testament, I think, are just, and they're words of wisdom, literally, from the book of Proverbs. And I've got a shirt that even kind of, uh, I almost wore it today because it kind of says this in a way. But it's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Hey, trust in him with all your heart. We've seen this idea of our hearts quite a bit today in Scripture when it comes to prayer. Like, trust in him with all of your heart. 
Because if we trust in him with our heart and we allow him to lead us, to guide us, and direct our hearts, we know that he'll take us down the right path. And we know that that's what determines our direction. So trust in him. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all that you do, and he'll show you which path to take, which direction to go. He'll do that. So, listen, we, we need to seek God's path during this time. And listen, he'll, he'll lay things on your heart to do and directions to take that are going to be unique to you and specific to you because you've got people in your life that I don't have in my life and vice versa. And, so, and there's a world to reach for Jesus. And so he's going to lead us in some different directions to share that love and to shine that light. And, 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 and listen, he, he'll be faithful through it all. So pray for personal direction. Number three is this. Pray for your own family and pray for our church family. That's basically what that is. Pray for your family and pray for our church family. I didn't mention this in the first service today, but I'll mention it now. A lot of times, I think especially as men, we seem to have this attitude that like, hey, anybody messes with my family, I'll get them. I know, we know, again, I say this about North Carolina and West North Carolina, we know you've got guns and you like to fight. I mean, I know, that's, that's like every, every man around here. I know, I'm with you too. Would you pray for your, listen, talk about defending your family. The greatest enemy we have is Satan. Amen. Will you protect your family against Satan? Amen. Will you hit your knees and humble yourself before God to pray for your family and say, God, I'm not strong enough. to do, I need you. Pray for your family. I'm reminded, see, I, I'm stubborn, and I'll forget things. So I, I put up a reminder, like I have a reminder in my house every day to do this. It's right above my door. And we don't want to ever leave the house without doing it first. And we've gotten to such a place now where the girls actually, like it's just a part of what we do every day, the praying before we leave the house. But it's right above our door as we walk out. It's these verses right here in Joshua 24. Serve the Lord alone. But if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. Would you prefer that? And it's basically this next few, these next couple of sentences. Don't let it confuse you. This is what he's saying. Well, you want to you want to serve false idols? You want to worship false gods? And then he finishes up and says, "But as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. We're going to seek Him in all that we do. And as a church, we want to encourage you to do that as well." Our, our, our first priority should be what goes on in our own lives and taking care of our family and then to take care of our church family, to connect with people, to pray for them, to love people, to encourage them. This, these are the verses that we shared at our men's Bible study Thursday night that encouraged us, let's do this and let's pray for one another. Because Galatians chapter 6, beginning in verse 2, Paul says this, to share each other's burdens. Don't try to carry it on your own. Don't let it weigh you down. Share each other's burdens and in this way obey the law of Christ. If you think you are too important to help someone, you're only fooling yourself. That's a nice way to keep yourself in check. You're not that important. <laughs> What's your life verse? Uh, Galatians 6, 3b, I'm not that important. Uh, no, um, this is just a, a, a check on our ego and our pride. But I like what, what Paul says in verses 9 and 10. He says, hey, let's not get tired of doing what is good. I need that because... Again, I, I know that I'm wrapped up in this kind of time that we're in now. We all are. We've been living this for 18 months now with COVID. Like, it gets like I get tired sometimes of doing all the things that we ought to be doing. And I, I, I want to go back and, I don't know, it gets, I'm just tired. Y'all get tired? Okay. But it's an encouragement. Don't get tired of doing what's good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Now, that's a promise, and I'm going to stand on that promise, and I'm going to trust in that. That listen, while things may look different within the church or what's, whatever's going on or whatever I think or see, I know it might be different, but I'm not going to get tired of doing what's good because whatever God wants to do, he is going to reap a harvest of blessing and I'm not going to give up. That's an encouragement. So he goes on and says, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone. Everyone. And especially to those in our church. This is what he's saying. Be good to everybody out there. We don't know what they're dealing with. Just be good to them. Show them some love. Show them the light. And pray for each other in the church as well. Let's just do that. 
let's do that. Pray for our, our, our family, our church family. Let's, let's seek direction in our life. And then lastly today, number four is this. Pray for our community and look for opportunities to reach out. Like open your eyes a little bit. And I'm not telling you that every single opportunity is an obligation. That's kind of a, something I have to live by because, I don't know, sometimes you'll get opportunities to do things and you shouldn't feel obliged to do that. But you need to seek God's will and his way in that. And, and, and listen, look for opportunities to reach out, to share the gospel. Big and small opportunities. It might be something very personal, one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe you get an opportunity to do something you didn't expect God to do. And it's like I was talking at the first service today. It's just how God opens doors sometimes, and, and it works. But when our youth kids, and I'm telling you, I, I knew God was going to use this for good, and I just stood on it when it happened. And I don't, I don't mind telling you all this. When our youth kids went to camp back in July, man, it was nuts. Those boogers, those teenagers, some of them got in trouble. Y'all believe that? Do y'all believe there were teenagers that were doing things that might get them in a little bit of trouble? That's nuts. But they did. But you know what happened? It was all handled. And we prayed about it, and we did. It was, all, it was okay. It wasn't anything like, it wasn't anything like earth shattering. But there were some things that went on. And, and after that time, or during that time, God laid this message on my heart to share with the kids when they got back that Sunday. And I just believed, I was like, you know what, I don't think this message is just going to be for today. And I was praying about it as I preached that message. And I said, God, help me, like, help me see some opportunities to share this message with more young people. And over the next, and this is what God's done since that time. He opened up an opportunity to go and share it with 150 kids down at Swain County at, at, at a football mill. He opened up an opportunity this past week for me to go to FCA over at Fairview and share it with those kids. A ton of middle school kids there. And then I plan on sharing it again this Saturday night at the community event that's directed towards the youth. And I'm just like, every time I start to think about something to say, God's like, I already told you, say it. This is what you need to share. These young people need to hear this message. And it's just opportunities. And I'm just looking for that opportunity. And whether it's for it, like large group, small group, whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, whatever it is, just, just reach out and be the church outside of the church building. Just do that. And be wise. And be socially responsible and do all the things. Do good. Just be wise and do good. And, and to, listen, do whatever we can to the best of our ability to shine the light of Jesus in our world during this time. It's just not that difficult. Because we've seen what can happen through prayer. This idea, this peace that passes all understanding. That's what the Bible says. Uh, this this idea that, that, that we've looked at when it comes to all the, the, the prayer applications that we've made in Philippians 4, the promises that we see there, the way that we seek God, this opportunity to share hope and peace with this world that they don't know, they can't understand. Jesus himself promised, we looked at, listen, the power of the Holy Spirit, the relationship that we have with Jesus, all of these things that he gives us. He shared this with his disciples in John 14, 27. He said, I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind, and there it is again, our hearts. We must really have a hard time with those apart from Jesus. I'm, I'm leaving you with peace of mind and heart, and the peace that I give is a gift the world cannot give. And again, oh, there he is. So don't be troubled or afraid. Don't have fear. Timidity, all these things. The scripture just backs itself up so often when Jesus speaks and when we see what God's word says. And like, this is what we can do. We can share that gift with the world. We can share that gift with the world. Look for opportunities. And sometimes, listen, a lot of times we think it's going to be these grandiose. I know, listen, I get the same way sometimes. It's like these grandiose like opportunities and settings and all of these things. It's like, I know what's going to happen. God's going to set it up just like this, and I'm going to have a chance to talk to this person about Jesus, and their, li their life's going to change right there in that moment. It might not be that. You might come upon a stranger in a broken moment. When they're just like, you might, you might walk around the corner, and there's somebody just bawling their eyes out, and you know that God's laying on your heart to do something and share something with them or something. I don't know. Just be open for opportunities. Just be in that prayerful mindset. Don't be afraid. Share that peace. Share that light with the world. God's got a plan in all of this. And listen, 
the enemy wants to keep us from communicating with God. To me, that's just clear. It's clear to me, because I mean, if y'all are being honest with me about the distractions that you have during prayer, because I have them too. If y'all are like, well, let's make him feel better. Let's just tell him we do. I, I like. I believe we all get distracted. And the enemy wants to keep us from this time of prayer. So what we're going to do is this. Listen, we're going to give you an opportunity to spend time in prayer. And we're going to sing a song about prayer, about coming to God, whether we're broken, about coming to him to seek wisdom, whatever it is. Like, whatever the need, you can come and spend time with him quietly, peacefully, alone, with somebody in your family, with a spouse, with a kid, with a friend, whatever it is, and come and, and listen. Maybe you need to pray for personal direction. Maybe today God's laid on your heart somebody in your family. Maybe today God has laid somebody on your heart in our church. Maybe it's in our community. Maybe it's at your school or your job or your work. And he's laid that person on your heart today. And you can pray and say, listen, let me be the light in their darkness. And let me start living my life for you in all things. And having this prayerful attitude at all times. And maybe you just want to close out and worship with us. We're going to sing a song about how good Jesus is. And we're going to sit down here and we're going to, we're, going to, we're going to open the altar up if you want to come and you want to uh, spend some time and pray or whatever God's laying on your heart today. Whatever it is, I just want you to be obedient. I want you to be obedient in all things and trust in him. Trust in him. Don't lean on your own understanding. Trust in him during this time and just be obedient and seek him. Amen? Amen. Let's pray and we'll sing a song. Father, thank you for this opportunity. God, to get into your word today, Lord, to spend time together with brothers and sisters, to, to just share the power of this simple, this simple, uh, God, tool that you've given us of prayer, Lord, to, to seek you and trust you and come to you during those times, Lord. And God, you promise us that if we lack wisdom, you'll give it, uh, Lord, that you'll give us comfort and peace that, that we'll, we will find nowhere else. And and, Lord, we can come to you whether we're broken or, or whether we're hurting today or whether, God, we need to ask for forgiveness or whether we need to come today, God, just to seek your will for direction. Lord, you will meet us in any situation, in any circumstance today, and you'll meet us with open arms. So I, my prayer today, God, is that we understand the power of tapping into prayer and that we'll seek you and trust you in all things. And you'll have your will and your way over these next few moments.